practice session for the uh, GTP cars only out on the circuit. And I have to say, I'm rather excited by this. So the session has shown as starting and we've got the cars going immediately out onto the circuit. We're at Daytona Beach, Florida, the home of the, I suppose you could call it the home of sports car racing. It was originally a sports car race that got things underway all those years ago. Off the speedway down into turn one and into the international horseshoe, then through the kink, of course, and out onto the circuit itself through speedways turn three and four follow along with the live timing and scoring via imsa.com or our colleagues at alcamel as far as the cars that are going out are concerned uh, you will be delighted to know that we are expecting all 10 of them to go out. Neil Janney has already gone out for Proton Competition in the number five Porsche. Nick Tandy has taken out the number six Porsche for Porsche Penske Motorsports. Philippe Manazza in the number seven for Porsche Penske Motorsports. Uh, still in the pits, Wayne Taylor's Acura number 10. BMW's number 24 uh, BMW M Hybrid and uh, out on the track, Conor De Filippi has gone out in the sister car, the 25 people, Tarani for Whalen Engineering Cadillac, Louis Delatraz for Wayne Taylor Racing in the 40 car. That's the second of the Wayne Taylor Racing uh, machines, uh, Wayne Taylor Racing with Andretti. Then the JDC Miller Motorsports 85 cars, got Timon van der Helm. 28 degrees on the track with 12 Celsius in the air. If you prefer, that's 82 Fahrenheit on the track and 54 in the air, so not bad. Uh, at all uh, at IMSA Radio. Nick Damon is alongside me and he will be very excited to see cars out on the circuit and he'll be part of our team at the raceway next week. Uh, as I said in the intro, Nick, this is a, a session that we didn't actually get to see properly last year because of uh, uh, various problems with the, the weather. So we didn't get to see this head down no nonsense mindless boogie with just the uh, just the gtp cars that's great i mean um it's it is ridiculously exciting seeing these machines going around i've actually spent the uh quite a lot of the time between the end of the uh um Abu Dhabi race and here watching the virtual data 24 which was running on iRacing of course the biggest motorsport participation event of the year uh, and watching these uh these four cars which are modeled accurately within iRacing as it forces it for and uh yeah, and yeah, it's, it's not, but it's much nicer to see the real thing, I'm, I'll be honest with you. Um, and uh, getting a chance to see the cars, as you say, giving it full, absolute 100% chat prior to qualifying for this session. Um, quite warm track temperatures. The weather does seem like it's going to be good to us, even all the way through to the, uh, the race week as well. So we can have a nice warm race. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how... I'm particularly interested in seeing how the... the the privateer uh, Porsches do against the works cars as, as well, because obviously they were coming strong towards the back end of the season at Petit. Um, and it's interesting to see how they've developed over the year, they the, over the winter, having had the cars a bit longer. So Neil Janney has put the first time in a 141.833. We'll expect to see that come down just a, a little bit. And we've got all bar two cars out, the two BMWs. Actually, I, I thought Conor de Philippe had gone out. In fact, uh, he may have gone out and come straight back in again, but they're still showing in the pits lane at the moment. And, oh yeah, indeed, Conor de Philippe did do it out and back. Uh, hello to those of you trackside listening. Uh, there's been huge crowds this weekend at the Raw before the 24, and already a problem for Neil Janney in the Mustang sampling machine. That car has gone off on the infield and there's damage to the right front and to the front of that car. So Neil Johnny, quick to start with for Proton competition in the number five, the black and gold machine, but there's damage. We stay in green at the moment, just a 25 uh, minute session and he lost it comprehensively going into the kink. There was another car in the vicinity 
Now, was he trying to get round? It was the Cadillac with the uh, gold front on the car. And that, I'm afraid, was a rather strange incident for Neil Johnny. Did he come up across that? I, I think Nick just coming up on the back of that other car a wee bit quicker than he thought and Sebastian Bourdais who was on an outlap is that, is was travelling quite close is that the entrance to Le Mans he's gone off is this is where he's, he's t t t the tracker says he is I don't think he is is it uh, no that was oh. uh, as far as I could say that was the kink on the infield yeah I think you're right yeah, yeah. So, so, so it's going through four into five I think what probably happened is that the yellow um, Cadillac was going a lot slower than he expected it was an outlap and therefore in a jink to avoid him uh, it may be in the jink and the corner at the same time just to uh, overwhelm the grip of the car. And it looked like he locked up and perhaps uh, put where he did the, the, the hair braking and then put perhaps one wheel under the grass and slid off. That's uh, hopefully just an expensive carbon fibre error and not something any more serious. Yeah, agreed. The, uh, what I would say is we're going to see a lot of this because there are no tyre warmers. Uh, allowed, and although it will be a little warmer come race weekend, you will still see cars going very slow on their outlap. And when I say very slow, we are talking multiples of seconds slowly. They're slower than what you would see them on a flyer. So, already drama for Neil Janney. Hello to Kyle Hall, who is tuned in. Ewan Wayne, money man, race man, Tom Firth tuned in as well. At IMSA Radio, the usual spot to get in touch. And we've stayed green and we're down to 17 minutes already. The number five car back in the pit lane. Philippe Nazar, by the way, has put in a more competitive 134.974. And uh, that stacks up pretty well with what we've seen through the weekend so far. We had uh, Renge van der Zander with a 35.7 in the previous session earlier on. So already finding a little extra pace from there. Don't forget, we're getting ready to go into just a 15-minute qualifying. The GTPs have come back down to 15 minutes. They went up to 20 minutes last year and got an extra set of Michelin tyres. It's come back down to 15 because they weren't really using it, to be honest. And it was just costing a time on the schedule, I think. So it has come down just a wee bit in session four uh, we had the fastest time with team and van der helm and jdc miller motorsports car was a 35 2. so we are well ahead of the curb here hello to spirit and wood alistair watching and listening he says so great to be watching him to coverage on him radio and i know that sounds <laughs> funny but the point is that we've got the live video up for you as well, whether you're in the States or further afield. These two sessions available to you with no subscription. And that will continue throughout the season, of course, for WeatherTech Sports Car Championship qualifying. We will always have qualifying for you without blocks or breaks. Uh, if you are in the US, then the race, of course, is covered by your national TV provider whereas the international feed is available, again, without any interruption for those of you outside the States. The audio, as always, available to everybody and delighted to say that we have once again been able to take over some of the airwaves of Sirius XM for the season for the, the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Continuing to go around, we've got a few cars coming into the pits, Nick. Yeah, Philippe Nazar's just at a time of 133.966, which is about a second and a half faster than Team Van der Helm did in the last 
practice sessions, so they, there obviously has been a little bit of uh, qualifying setup put on the cars. I mean, they've taken the fuel out and, and it's fresh tyres, but I think also they've done a few little tweaks to make the cars quicker over a lap, where perhaps not quite so comfortable over race distance, which you can do. It's not something obviously there's a huge amount of concentration made prior to the 24 hour race, but this is obviously the chance of the first bit of bragging rights. And of course, unlike many other events, John, this being the person who's on pole position who's qualified first lasts for a, for a best part of a week. It's not just like overnight. That's it's a whole point. week to, to boast to people we're the fastest. In the pit lane at the moment is that number five car that had the little whoopsie, Neil Janney, an unusual mistake from the Proton Competition Porsche driver into the wall, coming up onto a slow-moving Sebastian Bourdais for Cadillac in the 0-1 car. Sebastian was on an outlap, he's continued. There was no contact between them, and it looks as though that very purposeful looking Mustang sampling black and gold car is going behind the wall. Question will be, can they get that car fixed in the next half an hour to 40 minutes, Nick, and get that car out to qualify? You might say, what's the point because it's a 24 hour race? But there is a point because all of these cars are still pretty new and people are still learning about them. Yeah, and he's done a bit more damage than I expected because he's actually managed to break the uh, wing mount on the rear right. So given the fact that he appeared to go in on the left hand side, um, he must have turned the car around. Yeah, he did turn the car around and then hit the barrier as well. So he's done mm. three corners of bodywork. The yeah. question is, has he done any toe links? Has he done any uh, arms at the same time? If it's just three corners of bodywork, that's a very easy half-hour fix for these prototypes. But uh, if it's anything mechanical, uh, suspension-wise, that could be more of a, more of a rush. Our uh, colleague, Joe Bradley, he'll be with us in Florida at the weekends, always says that... If the wheels are pointing in the right direction, vaguely speaking, then it's not so bad. Yeah, Bodywork can be fixed. To be honest, though, if I was going to go around the Daytona banking about 200 miles an hour, I want my wheels more than vaguely in the right direction, to be honest. I'd kind of like I'm all pointing mostly in the right direction. Do you think? Yeah, I know, <laughs> because I'm not a professional racing driver. <laughs> Do you think that's what it is? Yeah. OK, I'll buy, I'll buy that for a dollar. So full live coverage for you. Coming up in race week, we'll start with a special midweek motorsport on Wednesday, live from our broadcast booth at the Daytona International Speed. We're looking forward to that as always. No one else brings you more coverage of IMSA, and no one else will bring you more live free coverage of Daytona International and the Rolex this year already down to the last 11 minutes sebastian bourdain now goes to the top with a 33 5. as my colleague from round uh, floridian parts used to say to chuck dressing the guys are throwing overhand now this is more like it 33 5 from a 33 6 people durani's come to life for wheel and engineering cadillac it's two cadillacs at the sharp end of the field then just about a tenth or so back to philippe minaza for the best of the porsche penske motorsports the private cars were on top in the early part of the week still porsche penske motorsport will feel they have something to prove this year with the porsche 963 with Tillerese with andretti motorsport in fourth position for louis delatras in their acura number 40 just coming into the pits, in fact, as Borde exits onto the tri-oval and crosses the line now, heading down into turn one. Ahead of him, he's got the number seven of Felipe Naza as they turn into the infield. And Borde's just lowered the fastest time to Again. a 33.2, literally uh, five seconds after Naza had done a 33.5. So they are really clicking the times down, certainly compared to what they've done in, in qualifying practice so far. Um, still, I would expect that they'll find another few tenths, A, before the end of this session, and B, certainly during the qualifying session. This is important, uh, Nick, for all of the guys out there to be able to find what these cars are like right now in these relatively pleasant temperatures it's only 12 celsius in the air but the track temperature is 27 that's not bad it's had sunshine on it all day that's uh, 81 fahrenheit on the track 54 in the air it was extremely cold overnight tickling freezing point uh, at daytona and this is important for these guys to get a chance to run as they will in qualifying with no other cars on the track yeah absolutely and of course it's also getting some some running in, in warm temperatures given the 
the forecast we're currently seeing for the weekend, which is a low of something in the region of 16 degrees centigrade, highs around 26. Now, we don't know whether you get sun or not. You get sun on a, a 26 degree, you're going to find track temperatures of 45 mm. plus. So they, the, and in stark contrast, you say what they saw this morning when it was, you know, so cold to the touch, you, uh, you, could, you could freeze an egg rather than fry one. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's an interesting, it's interesting. And I think that yeah, this is the, this is the, the, the real challenge of running at Daytona at this time of year. We, are, we, we, we in the UK kind of think of Florida as a permanent sunshine state. Mm. Um, but as, as members of RSL have found to their, actually well, Imsa Radio have found to their chagrin over the past, you can turn up in, uh, for the Data 24 and absolutely freeze your whatnots off. <laughs> or not, or Br melt them. Brass monkeys do not apply. Yeah. Uh, Connor de Philippe improves his time. Fourth position for the BMW M Team RLL driver. The M Hybrid V8 clocking in at 133.8. We've got the top six cars within nine tenths of a second. Take Neil Janney out because he hasn't got a representative time, having gone out early and made that mistake on the infield as he came across a slow-moving Cadillac driven by Sebastian Bourdais. Sebastian was on his outlap doing nothing wrong, but it seemed to startle Neil Janney and a little jink going up towards the kink on the infield at turn four, the dog leg left and lost control of the car, put it into the barriers driver, driver's left. Uh, time and van der Helm for JDC Miller Motorsports Porsche, just a little off the pace as well. But everybody else within a second and a half at the moment, and we've still got eight minutes to go. Hello to A110GE. Uh, thanks, he says, for bringing us video coverage of this practice session. Thank you very much. Yes, he Kron's just had a little issue as well. Williams supporters. Uh, Williams uh, Esports winning the iRacing. Mm. Uh, Daytona 24 earlier on today. Congratulations to all of those involved and all of you who took part. I know there will be, will have been a lot of you that uh, took part. IMSA Radio with the World Feed TV also available in the USA for this final practice session and will stay on the air for qualifying. You can see that with us as well. No need to tune anywhere else. No side by sides except on the track. <laughs> and no subscription required and no interruptions either. You'll see all of the qualifying sessions coming up uh, in sound and vision. If you're out and about, you can tune in to us on RS2 via imsaradio.com and the player. Maybe if you're a little bit banned with challenge as well, you can do that too. We've got half the field in the pits lane at the moment. In the pits, it's the 0-1 quickest car at the moment with that 133-2 is Sebastian Bourdais, the number five is in the pit lane being, well, actually, that's gone behind the wall now, the Pro Non Competition car. The number six and seven, the two Porsche Penske Motorsports cars, and the number 10, the traditional Wayne Taylor Racing with, Acu with, uh, with Acura, with an Acura, but with, with Acura. Andretti. Philippe Albuquerque's brought that car back into the pit lane as well. Out on the circuit at the moment. And a scary moment for the 85 down at the western end of the Oof. infield. Just lost the front end and the back end and the front end again under braking for that bright yellow machine in the hands of Time and Van der Helm. He doesn't look happy on that car. The um, brake by wire systems are still being worked on and still being yeah. perfected to the driver's liking. I mean, this is the thing is that there's so much technology, so much electronics within these uh, machines now, not just for the hybridization, you say for the brake by wire, the, the drive by wire. And when people ask, what's the big difference between the cars which were here last year and the cars which are here now, it's going to be virtually all ones and zeros. It's going to be yeah. almost entirely software. Yes, they've put some reliability, but most of them had very established engines anyway. They, they, they redeveloped it from many years ago to, to run the actual basic power plant. The hybridization has been um, obviously sorted out and, uh, and made more reliable. And, and, and you know, the, the massive improvement between um, Daytona 2023 and Petit was, ma was big. But of course, if now they, they've had a few weeks over the winter where they've been able to work on these systems. The thing is, you can't redo really an awful lot with these heavily homologated cars outside of the electronics. This is where the real gains to be made. Yes, I'm sure there's a chance of finding a magic setup, but by now they've done enough testing and have been to enough tracks to probably know where they are basically. Yes, you can find a, a bit here and there. But the real developments which we made the car in the second year of the uh, GTP is going to be who can manage the electronics best. And it's, you know, it's become a software battle. You know, as we know, in some ways it was a 
piece of dodgy software that actually won the race last year here. So, you know, I'm sure it is all now legal. They've seen how it is policed. Well, th 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 there is no... Um, in terms of being able to develop the software, the control software for the standard hybrid systems, have at it. Mm. You, you are basically being told, go for it. It is not proprietary software that is forced upon the teams. And indeed, talking to some of the teams, particularly, look, we, we've only got privateer Porsches at the moment, but talking to some of those teams, there's no real requirement. If, if those... Porsche customer teams feel that they can do a better job than what they've been given by Porsche Motorsport. There's nothing to stop them developing that on their own. And I had a long chat last year with uh, a couple of Porsche teams and they were seriously considering that. In the early running, of course, you want to get the cars running yeah. and you want to understand yeah. them. But I think your point about it, it's ones and zeros here. I think that's really important. There will be as many people pouring over the algorithms as there will be over bump and rebound. Yeah, well, I had a chat with um, Alex Wirtz yesterday. Uh, obviously, he was, he's part of the Toyota program, which is obviously hypercar. Which it's the same thing here. And he said that um, they found last winter, which is the first year they're running that, that new version with their new car, they found 0.6 of a second a lap just on fine-tuning the drive-by-wire, the brake-by-wire, and some of the hybrid deployment. Now, it's not directly transferable, but that's the sort of gain you will see between the first and second year of new cars. And don't forget, when they came here last year, they were, as you're absolutely right, John, they were, they were as just as concerned at that point about making sure the oily bits carried on going for 24 hours and the suspension parts carried on going for 24 hours and all the bits stuck together and they, you know, they actually build the car bits. Now it's about development. Now it's about how can we make the elements work together. It's the synergy of the entire product. And suddenly, you know, you've got so many extra bits working together to produce a, a coherent racing car. Just looking at these times with two minutes, two and a half minutes or thereabouts to go, the top three are underneath Oli Jarvis's Mazda Motorsports qualifying record. Okay. That, that was a, a record that had stood for 26 years until Oli broke it. That was PJ Jones and AAR Eagle back in 1993. That then was a 33.8. 33398 and now we've got 334 two for Sebastian Bourdais so that's at least one of the, the cars is quicker than that qualifying session that put Ollie on pole position will will it go is the question hello to say Phil who's in Lincolnshire in England as we're down to the last couple of minutes uh, Spec3 says, is it too early to singing, sing We All Live in the Yellow 963? Very good. Nice, well done. Yeah, Excellent. you like that, don't you? Uh, any, any, any time when you can repurpose Beatles song, I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Jeans noticed how close we are at the qualifying lap record at the moment. Michael Albert as well tuned in. This is the last 90 seconds of practice before we set the grid for the Rolex 24 hours of Daytona for 2024. And you're watching and or listening to it live on IMSA Radio and IMSA TV. Great to have your company. Delighted to be back here for 2024. And looking forward to extended coverage for this season. Right turn lovers say, are, is my, are manufacturers prov uh, mandated to provide the latest iteration of the hybrid control software to customer teams? Um, as far as I know, they have to for the hardware. There's the only one valid LMDH homologation. They can't run different hardware. Absolutely correct. Hardware is set.
down to the last moments. Checkered flag is out. Hello to Mustang GT3 fan in Canada. So Bordet then, quickest in that session. If he can repeat that, that would be a new qualifying lap record. 133.2, about three quarters, uh, sorry, about a quarter of a second ahead of Philippe Nasser, who went back out at the end for Porsche Penske Motorsport in the 963, but hasn't got back around. He just basically did an outlap there. If he was just scrubbing in some tyres. That would be, uh, yeah, doing a, a one run, one lap warm run for the heat cycle. Philippe Nasa for Cadillac in third and Whelan Engineering in the 31. He was in the pits at the end, as was Conor de Filippi in fourth for BMW M Team RLL. Fifth position in the best of the Acuras, Wayne Taylor Racing, of which there are two, both in the colours of WTR with Andretti. Nick Tandy for Porsche Penske Motorsport. I don't think he'll be happy at nearly a second away from the fastest time and more the point, six tenths away from his teammate. Yeah, that's not what uh, what Nick wants to see. But I suppose he's had a, he's also done an out lap and in at the end as well. So my guess is there have been a couple of people. They obviously decided that perhaps getting a, a lap on the tyres is the fastest way to run them. Perhaps it helps with, the, with the, having a heat cycle into these tyres, which don't go into warmers. Mm. Um, it's, really, I mean, it's very interesting. We've got you know, quite a quite a large spread at the top if you think about it, from the 33-2 down to. Uh, a 34 hey guys, a absolutely is a, is perfect a, day for qualifying here. Not so perfect right now the for the Mustang sampling guys, and everybody recognizes is a, is Christian Fittipaldi. Um, the incident that level. happened out there, obviously you don't want to see it because it looks like the car exactly is not going to be out in time for qualifying. All exactly yeah, on, it's going to be awfully uh, close for it to be out for qualifying, but I guess you're right. Like It's going to be hard. Lots to learn. Especially with the complexity of these cars nowadays. It's not like back in the Grand Am days where everything was a lot easier for you to fix. The cars, like first chance by the way, for us to describe really, really high tech. Art so on we'll the see. grass. The good news is that the it's a 24-hour race. It's a global broadcast a center. Of time it has a, racing an again. aerial the theme. Is, oh, yes. um, this year, we had a decent the car in the us, and we wanted to see where we could stack up compared streaking to across the other cars, at least in uh, raw could performance. Be. But uh, it is what it is. Yeah, you guys were wicked quick. Third quick, I think, sort of over the weekend as far as times go. But Stealth, as a driver, really? you know yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. what it's like in these cold uh, conditions. Cross and in, today, the other thing that we have is big, in big the wind, kind of, of pushing the cars into turn one and yeah, down on the, the nose track. into the Le Mans chicane. How uh, big a, and, uh, a factor is that temperature and that wind? Various other well, you pretty much said it all. Like, uh, I agree 100% oh, like with the wind, the uh, on especially the track. here in Daytona where everything is open. When you get these, these big, this will be able to big see massive very, winds, very, very uh, busy the car is going to react um, one way going into turn one, one, especially under braking, this, this and it's going to react completely um, different going into the bus stop because you're going to have like an old wind. And if the wind is coming the other direction, it's going to be like the opposite. So it's going to be a lot harder going into the bus stop and a lot easier going into turn one place. but Top line I guess it's the race. same win for everyone, and you just have to play it the best way as possible. Well, and like you said, it's qualifying for a 24-hour race. It's the race that gives you the most points. That's what really matters. But disappointment here at Mustang's, Mustang Sampling as they work to get this back out, guys. And whilst it may have um, uh, lasted many more years than was intended by the ACO initially, it's proven its worth. And... Uh, as it has effectively become, I think Buzz about says you call one make series. Not a one make series here, is it? Because of course we've got the Lige of uh, Correct. Sean, Sean Cruz ra racing, which is going to be. Really, I mean, they should be okay here because the Lige's weaknesses weren't at the faster tracks. See, it was. Uh, it, 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 historical weaknesses were more at the tracks with lots of corners. Um, so hopefully, they're, they're, it was an interesting decision to go with that car because um, there's no shortage of Oracles knocking about. If you want one, um, they only made what is it 107 they've made or something? 107 chassis, I think, of the Oracle 07. And then, of course, we had to do the other classes, of course, are the GT3s, as they know in Europe, of course, the GTDs here in both Pro and... Uh, and and Am. And Am. I wasn't no. that. It's Pro <laughs> and... It's actually GTD, Am, and just GTD. Oh, right. Effect, it's not, it's not Pro and nothing. It's not Pro and Am. It's, it's, it's GTD it's and Am. Correct. It's okay. GTD and Am. Uh, apologies if you just heard a bit of our NBC colleagues. Uh, Tech up in their brand new centre at Concord in North Carolina. Just working on that. 
as we speak at the moment. But nice of the NBC team to say hello to our audience. And hello to theirs. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> as the GT and GT... Rolled out straight away. This is what I love about IMSA. We literally got the number seven car into the pit lane, made sure everything was cleaned up, and then we're immediately back to uh, racing, or at least uh, track action, and that means that this is a qualifying session, and this will set the grid, and already a car is off. So another early problem, it's the red and white Porsche that's gone off very, very early on. 92. It is indeed the Fat Buddha car. Oh my goodness me, this is one of the Kelly Moss racing cars. Now, that was literally straight out of the pit lane and straight on Oof. at the International Horseshoe on cold tyres. That's a very, very odd one indeed. And that's brought out a red flag, but the, uh, of course, the time will continue to count down. We've now seen a couple of instances. Uh, it's David in Brule, by the way, who was in that uh, car. He's been talked to by the EMR safety crew. We've seen a couple of instances already, um, just in the, in the what, 40, half an hour in watching of the issue with cars on cold tyres. Initially an accident caused by the avoidance of a cold car running slowly on cold tyres, and now mm -hmm. a cold tyres. Is it such a good idea to get rid of warmers, John? Uh, we know why it's done. We understand the reasons for it, and, it's, it, it, and as we found out in, in um, Motorsport, it gets you extra ticks in the uh, sustainability um, racing uh, <laughs> index. Right. But I just think it's an unnecessary saving. Stick some solar panels up and generate the power for it somewhere. Well, yes. Um, it I'm does add extra strength. I mean, fair I'm, I'm torn because what it does is it, and I think this is right, um, it's rewards teams who can double stint their tyres. Yeah. Which I think is right. And also that encourages people to double stint their tyres and keep the heat in them. Now, in IMSA, you've only got a certain amount of tyres anyway, so you're sort of forced into doing that. Um, but we didn't have that many problems last year. Um, the World Championship, the FIA World Championship, seemed to have a lot more problems and in fact, changed their regs after, bizarrely, the four-wheel drive cars were the ones that couldn't keep it on the track at Spa, <laughs> and they were spinning up the front wheels and getting torque steer, which I thought was a very odd situation. Um, I, I believe that it's unnecessary, I'll be honest with you. You, d you drive to the conditions. What, you know, what do you do? Not drive when it's wet, when you haven't got it. You feel the conditions. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. I think it's... it's I just somehow feel that yeah, you can add extra safety effectively by putting people onto the track with grip, and especially when you're changing drivers. You know, I know the first accident was caused by two of the best professionals, but this is this is guys who are, this is a, you know, the gentlemen, this is the amateurs uh, who will go out on the track for the first time with with very little grip, not know, not necessarily having the ability to, to feel it as some of the some of them would. And you kind of think, is this just an unnecessary extra risk? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the cars that have been out. Actually, before that, RTLs have said, uh, will they extend the GTT session time based on what would the grid be set championship standings are not available? Um, could do. Um, they can just do it. Uh, rock, paper, scissors behind the yeah. pit lane or in number order. International rock, paper and scissors. Fantastic. Mm. I've seen that. Have you? Yeah. Uh, I thought there, there is a world championship of rock, paper, scissors. Didn't somebody add a fourth thing to it as well? Rock, rock, paper, scissors. I, I, it, it's, it's not for this conversation, but I'm sure there's a fourth thing. Well, rock, red flag. <laughs> <laughs> rock, paper, scissors, red flag, yeah. Um, uh, let me tell you who has been out. Matt Bell took out the number 13 AWA Chevy Corvette. We've got the first ever Chevy Corvette GT3 uh, out there, and we've got a number of them here this weekend because the Corvette Racing by Pratt Miller have two, and AWA have a couple as well. And Nico Varone took out the number 17 car, the Italian-Argentinian. Uh, what a character he is. And 
Uh, who else has been out? Alessio Rivera for Triazi competition in the gorgeous 296 GT3, the 023. Not to be confused with the 23, which is heart of racing Aston Martin. That car Absolutely. hasn't been, been out at the moment. Uh, Alba Costa Balboa for Conquest Racing has been out in the Ferrari. The number 34, Andretti Motorsports Porsche, Thomas Prining, the Austrian uh, Porsche driver. He was a Porsche young driver for a little while. I think he still is supported by Porsche. He's very, just, very well thought of. Hmm? He's just older now, so he's not a young yeah, driver. That's correct. <laughs> he's, he's, a, he's an older, faster Porsche driver. John Potter's been out in the Vantage for Magnus Racing, the number 44. The Iron Lynx, number 60, Lamborghini Huracan, Romain Chicago. Rojan has been out in that one, and the Ferrari 296 for Risi competition. Daniel Serra has been out for the number 62. Gradient and Catherine Legg has been out for Acura in the 66, and we've also had Klaus Backler for MDK in their Porsche. No representative times at all, and I suspect now that has... Uh, I suspect that we are now underneath the amount of time to get a session that will count for... Yeah, we are. We're underneath the time to get a session that would count for qualifying. So there will have to be a decision taken here. Uh, Mickey has said, uh, rock, paper, scissors, Spock, lizard. No. I think um, mm. water bomb is one. <laughs> Definitely. Water bomb. That's that one. So water bomb does fire. Water bomb kind of wins everything except rock. Although it can erode no, rock. No, dart. It'll it, beat water bomb. It, it, oh, dart. That's <laughs> so we're adding dart. <laughs> right, OK. Yes, very good. Uh, also rust scissors as well, of course. Rusty scissors. Yeah. Yes, rust, very rust, good point. Rust scissors. <laughs> Nothing um, worse than rusty scissors. I, surely if it's motorsport, it should be iPhone torch, lump hammer and tie wraps. Yeah, and very good point. And then work out which one, which. They, they all do everything. Also, I'm just seeing that we've had an issue for the number nine uh, with the on the far side of the circuit, and that was Marvin Kerkhofer in the McLaren. He hasn't even completed the lap. The front panel of that car's come off, and he, he's put it back on again. Uh, rock, paper, scissors, lizard Spock was the uh, big bang theory, wasn't it? Uh. Greg Kramer. Hello, Greg. Good to know you're tuned in. He said, uh, I agree with you for whatever that's worth. Well, may anybody agreeing with me is putting themselves on the, in the firing line. It puts the driver back in the picture a bit more. Those that can find grip, speed in low grip situations who have that gift of feel deserve to be rewarded. Our team manager behind me has told me the problem with that McLaren was they left the radiator blank in. Ah. And they've had to stop it and take it out. Excellent. So thank you, Mr. Bradley. Right. Ah, oh, the two yeah. new Mustangs on the screen now, if you can see the pictures. Uh, apparently that was from yesterday, we've just heard. Ah, that was a replay. Yeah. yeah. So yesterday I made a horrible mistake, but not today. Yeah. Good start for Mustang GT4 and VP Racing. They won their first race for the new Mustang. The GT3 is out here in the hands of uh, Ford Multimatic Motorsport, Mike Rockenfeller and Joey Hand listed against them at the moment, but they've not yet gone out, so I'm not going to commit to that because I can't see the drivers in there. I think we must be close to going green because there's some movement and there's some angling of cars. AWA Corvettes looking resplendent in a satin blue with a red and white stripe over the bonnet in the case of one of their cars. The other one is in more traditional AWA black and yellow. The Pratt Miller cars, of course, are in the very traditional now, um, what was called Millennium Yellow, then Velocity I'm Yellow. I going to say something controversial. That's a better looking car than the previous version was. Do you think? Yeah, definitely. The C8? Looks better. Looks better, it looks better than the GT3 version. They Do you think? Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the GTE, auto, it looks better than the GTE. Yeah, the auto version. That looks really sharp, I think. Right. Perhaps it just really worked out how to accent, accentuate the look with the with the colour scheme, but that looks good, that does. Still waiting for a green flag situation. If you're just joining us, hello. Nice to have your company. Nick Damon and John Hindhoff on RS2. And 
around the world on video as well. I think the Mustang's going to win an award for the most raked wing mounts, isn't it? <laughs> it's got the wing mounts that are uh, attached to the body about, four, about three feet before the actual point of uh, downforce from the wing. Hmm. Looking forward to seeing all these in the flesh next week, I can tell you. Actually, later this week, isn't it? So what's the normal process here, John, when they've, they've sort of run out of time due to the red flag? Are they going to give us more time, go later? Or is it going to be... Well, uh, I'm waiting to see. It, uh, the clock is still counting down. Normally, you'd go by championship positions, but we don't have championship positions. The option is to go on any official session. So what you'd normally do is go on the last official session or set the cars up on uh, championship points. We have no championship points. Right. But any official session can be used as a qualifying session if it is needed to be. Right. We will wait from race control to let us know that. Hello if you're at the circuit, by the way. Apologies for the lack of cars. Still waiting for the clearance from race control after that incident for the number 92, David Brulet, in the... Riley, Kelly Moss with Riley Porsche, the fat Buddha number 92, red and white car. Uh, that car will, of course, lose its two fastest laps. I don't think that's going to be an issue because I don't think it's going to actually mm. complete any laps at the moment. And we are just after, or just on seven minutes past two o'clock in the afternoon. And... We're down now under three minutes. So even if we get going now, unless they extend this session, we haven't had enough green flag per the regulations of IMSA to make this a live session. So what I expect to see as a very sad looking Porsche is on the back of the flatbed and on its way back to the pit lane. It's lost the left front wing, the fender. Don't worry about the bonnet sticking up. Uh, that's not an issue. There's no front splitter on there either. Looking at the front suspension, it looks like... Front right doesn't look very I, I was going to say, bizarrely, it does look like the front right has taken more of a clatter than the front left, but the front left right has left. lost the wing. Isn't that, that odd? Yeah, I mean, that's... Uh, yeah, it's, as we've seen these cars, they kind of go in all sorts of angles once they've lost, lost it on the cold tires. The door's open, which doesn't help, because that could flap right open any, any second now. So don't now think that, I don't think that's a function of the incident, though. No, it's a function of it not being shut properly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By that one, yes. <laughs> and, uh, well, I have track to, now. Yeah, so we can go green once that vehicle is clear and if race control deem it to be safe. I will say, after an excitement of the final GTP practice, where we were underneath the current qualifying record set a few years ago now by Ollie Jarvis in the Mazda, at that point, it was a more than 26-year-old record that was broken. And we've been quicker than that, and we were very excited. And we have reset the time to 7 minutes and 36 seconds. So with what we had before the red flag, that takes it over the 10 minutes, and therefore we'll have a session. So 7.22 and counting now. So this is it. The car's going back out onto the circuit. I'll tell you now, I, I, I'm going to make a prediction, John. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear a huge number of drivers moaning about traffic. Mm. <laughs> I said front splitter there, didn't I? I meant bottom of the splitter. Apologies, Nick H, and thank you for pointing that out. No. I am beating myself I'll up. I'll just say front nose just to get, a, get out of the way. <laughs> Uh, I am taking a drink. Sadly, it's only water. <laughs> so, seven and a half minutes to get at least one quick lap in. There is a mm. whole train of cars. Of course there are. The first of which is about to get itself back onto the banking at uh, turn seven. If you are just joining us, uh, your timing is impeccable, actually. <laughs> because we've been waiting for some action and now we have it. As the cars roll out, uh, we, we're only, at the moment of course, we're only talking about the uh, the bulk of the GTD field. Quite a lot of the pros haven't got out yet. Uh, still no works Corvettes. We haven't had the McLaren from FAF. We haven't had uh, Frank Monte Calvo 
in the Lexus. We haven't had Mike Skeen in the Mercedes, no, and two of those have just gone out. So uh, it's Parker Thompson who's taking out the Lexus number 12. That's the GTD, effectively the pro car. And everybody's now going to come out. All right, so in number order, quickly, Madison Snow is qualifying for Paul Miller Racer, celebrating his uh, elevation to a BMW factory driver. Antonio Garcia for the number three Pratt Miller Corvette racing car. Tommy Milner for the four. Ollie Jarvis, whose lap record could well be broken for qualifying later on. Faf Motorsport takes out the McLaren. Parker Thompson, we've mentioned in the 12. Vassa Sullivan. Matt Bell in the AWA Chevy Corvette. Jack Hawks with the Vassa Sullivan in the Lexus number 14. That's the GTD Pro car. Nico Veron in the AWA Corvette has taken that car out again, the 17. Frank Pereira for Iron Lynx in the 19 Lamborghini. Miguel Molina in the 21 Ferrari for AF Corsa. Heart of Racing's Rofs Gunners in the 23. The 023 is the Triazzi Competition Ferrari with Alessio Rivera. Roman De Angelis in the 27. Heart of Racing team for Aston Martin. Mick Grenier in the 32 AMG GT3. Alba. Costa Balboa for Conquest's Ferrari in the number 34. Thomas Prining for Magnus, for Andretti Motorsports, excuse me, in the 43. It's John Potter for Magnus in there, Aston. WTR with Andretti's Lamborghini Huracan is Kyle Marcelli in the 45. Antonio Forgo for Chetilar in their blue Ferrari T96, the 47. Dennis Olsen for Prototone Competition in the GT3. Winward has Phil Ellis out in the 57 AMG GT3. Roman Grosjean in the Pro number 60 Iron Lynx uh, Huracan Lamborghini. Ferrari T96 for Reese's Dan Serra in the 62. Harry Tinknell for Ford. Multimatic Motorsport, that's the works car, the 64, Dirk Muller's in the 65, Catherine Lake for Gradient in the 66, Frank, uh, Frederick Schondorf for Inception, McLaren in the 70, Mauro Engel, Sun Energy 1 uh, for Mercedes, we talked about Mauro Engel's uh, GT3 lap record around Yas earlier on today, set at the back end of last year, he's in the 75 AMG, Porsche EO Racing is set Prio in the 77, Loris Perelli for Forte, Lamborghini Huracan, Adam Christodoulou uh, for Lone Star Racing in the number 80 AMG, Iron Dames uh, uh, have got, where's that gun? Iron Dames is Michelle Gatting as she completes <laughs> a lap. Uh, Pat Gallagher will be out in Turner Motorsports number 96 and Adam Adelson in Wright Motorsports number 120. That's the movie car, of course, the uh, blue machine. Uh, and we'll be hearing a lot more about that, I'm sure, over the weekend. Hello to Sarah Rigby up in Crewe in the northwest of England. Time starting to come in. It'll need to be somewhere closer to 140 than what we're seeing at the moment. Klaus Backler for MDK Motorsports in the Porsche GT3 R992 is at the moment half a second ahead of the field. Uh, the best of the pro cars is Harry Tinknell. He's down in sixth at the moment. It does seem, though, if we've learned anything from the last couple of seasons, that Tinknell is probably down in sixth at the moment. It does seem, though, if we've learned anything from the last couple of seasons, is that the GTD pro cars take a little bit more time to bring their tyres up to temperature and pressure. He's two seconds all but. Uh, away from Klaus's time in that Porsche. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, certainly got a, a run of uh, the GTD cars rather than the pros at the top. We are waiting for the first laps from three of the fastest cars, which is the, both the uh, work. Those with, uh, but, 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 uh, can you, are they works Corvettes anymore? There's the Pratt Miller Corvettes. The and Pratt Miller cars are works Corvettes. Yeah, well, there's, no, the, um, there's no Corvette, uh, they say there's no Corvette racing anymore, but Corvette, it isn't the title of the team, is Corvette racing by Pratt Miller. So it's semantics, eh? Mm -hmm. uh, and they're about to cross the start finish line any second now. They record their first as is Ollie Jarvis. And we're down to three minutes to go. And everybody who can be out, I think, is now out. There'll be no time for the Kelly Moss with Riley, number 92. That caused the red flag. Backler goes through again with a 44 8. He's three tenths to the good on AWA Chevy Corvette. The GTD car in second, that's Mark Bell, Tom Prining, Thomas Prining goes through for Andretti Motorsports in Porsche, Porsche, Corvette, Porsche. These are all GTD cars. And the best of GTD pros is Seb Prio for AO Racing. He's a Multimatic driver, but not in a Ford at the moment. Uh, gaining some experience, he's in sixth at the moment and is the best of the pros. We've got Loris Spinelli for Forte Racing in the Lamborghini Huracan with a 44-7. As into the pits comes Roman De Angelis for Heart of Racing team. He's clearly not happy and he will be no better than 32nd at the moment. In fact, he's dropping down. He's going to be almost dead last. He must have a problem there. Roman is such a good qualifier. 
So Spinelli by a tenth of a second from Bachler now in second for MDK's Porsche. Then the Chevy Corvette of Matthew Bell. Best of the pro was Seb Prio in eighth position in the Ill Racing Porsche. Dirk Muller for Ford Multi Manic Motorsport is second in GDD Pro. And Daniel Surra is third for Risi Competition. Now, remember that in this category, they will start as they qualify. So we don't put the pros ahead of the GTDs here. Hawksworth goes to the top of GTD Pro, but still has three GTDs ahead of him. The Lexus RCF GT3, is this its last year? Will it do one more year? We don't know. The new car perhaps not coming on as quick as Lexus and Toyota Agazu Racing would like, but Hawksworth for the moment into fourth position outside of row two for the Rolex 24 hours at Daytona next weekend. Hello to Ben Stevenson, who's tuned in with a roast dinner. And to the top, Catherine Lake for Acura and for Gradient Racing. And Seb Priol nips ahead. So it's now a GTD Pro ahead of a GTD. What a lap that was from Kat, 144.6. And she has got that car motoring, but she's just 0.069 of a second away from Laura Spinelli. As the cars stream by, Jack Hawksworth just gone across the line. Catherine Legg then on the far side of the circuit, down to the west end of the infield, sitting on provisional pool for GTD at the moment, on the front row as it stands in the JG Wentworth. Green and white, number 66. What a turn up this would be. I know there's been a lot made of the fact that there's more female drivers, nine female drivers this year in the race. They're just drivers. The car and the stopwatch don't care. And that's how they expect to be treated as well. And Catherine Legg has said that many times down through the years. Very impressive driver. Check it, flag is out. So who could take it to either Seb Prio or Catherine Legg coming across the line? Here comes the Lexus. Does Parker Thompson improve? He does up to third position. And that just eases Catherine Legg off the GTD pool. Hawksworth's gone through in the other Lexus and he goes onto the front row. Seb Prio's still out there. Catherine Legg's still out there. Looking at the split times, Ollie Jarvis has done a decent time, but it's only going to be good enough for 10th. Tommy Milner, 16th in the first qualifying for the Corvette GT3. Porsche, Lexus, Lexus, Porsche, Acura, Lamborghini. Tony Garcia is the best of the Corvettes, for the moment at least, as Catherine Legg pits. She'll be no better than third in GTD, fifth overall, as Vassa Sullivan's Parker Thompson takes the chequered flag and he will be on the inside of row two. Wow. Very interesting. Very interesting at the moment. There's still a few cars to come through. Here comes the 62 of Daniel Serra and he goes up to 11th position, fifth in pro. Also coming through the number 45. Now that car seemed to have jumped up a little bit. Where's that one gone to on the timing screens? It's Carl Marcelli for Wim Taylor Racing in the Lamborghini Huracan. Gone up to sixth inside, uh, outside of row three and fourth in GTD. John Potter coming to the line as well behind the number 75 of Mauro Engel for Sun Energy One. Doesn't improve. Does John Potter improve? No, he does not. Here comes Winwood Racing, the number 57 car to the line. Behind them, it'll be the number 96 taking the chequered flag. I think everyone's, fin everyone's finished. Patrick Gallagher out. has seen the chequered flag, so he should be coming in the pit lane. Yeah, the 57 Ooh. was the last car which took the uh, had an extra lap. So it's a pre -op with the Porsche from two Lexuses, one of which calls the pro of Hat Hawksworth, but the uh, top of GTD is Parker Thompson in the 12 machine. Dan Burdett has uh, picked me up something I said. He said, what do you mean the GTD Pro cars tend to take longer to get the tyres up to temperature? I thought the whole point was the cars are identical specs across the whole class, differing by driver grading. The cars are identical, but it just seems as though the GTD Pro drivers tend to take more time to bring the cars up. I think deliberately. My point was that they do it in a slightly different way. They are maybe a little more gentle and they bring the tyres in in a different way. It might be that they've got a slightly different setup, it might be that they're doing slightly different starting pressures as well on those tyres, but it does seem to take them a lap or two more.
more to get the best out of the tyres. And if you notice, all of the GTD Pro laps that were their better laps were coming in later on in their stint if there. Now, it was it was just a short session, that. Yeah, but if, I mean, if you set a... If you think about a typical pro car, a typical um, standard car, the pro car is going to be quicker because it's edgier, because the, the, all three drivers are going to hang on to it. If it's edgier, it's going to tend to mean it's got more oversteer, which is going to tend to mean you want to take a little bit longer to get the rear tyres up to temperature before you push. That's typical. I know we have a lot of very, very good drivers in, in, in standard GTD, but that would be my reason yeah. why that you do it, because you've got a much edgier car. Car that bit's more knife edge, yeah. uh, particularly when you're in qualifying. Yep. So our first qualifying session of 2024 in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship sees AO Racing on pole position uh, with the young Channel Islander Seb Prio grabbing pole position for the Porsche number 77, subject to post qualifying tech, of course. He's 0 0.080 ahead of Jack Hawksworth in second place. Uh, in GTD Pro and second overall, the Lexus number 14 is their GTD Pro car, the RCF uh, GT3. His teammate, Parker Thompson, uh, very much a pro driver, but in the GTD category, uh, has taken the pole position in GTD ahead of Klaus Backler for Porsche and MDK Motorsports and Catherine Legg for Gradient Racing. Catherine, who led overall for a little while. That is a huge improvement for Gradient there. Struggled sometimes last year to find any pace in the car. The car was good. They had good strategy. But they've been working very, very hard indeed with that JG went with green and white car. Finishing up the top six, Carl Marcelli for Wayne Taylor Racing with uh, the Lamborghini Huracan. And that was... A very interesting session. Who's out of position? Well, I can't imagine that uh, Corvette Racing uh, Pratt Miller cars are going to be happy at being ninth uh, for their best car. Uh, I can't imagine that Reese are going to be happy with 12th. Um, Heart of Racing, the pro car, down in 25th mm. position. New car. None of the Fords have gone particularly well, but it is, of course, its first outing, so it's hard mm. to know what to expect. Dirk Muller, I think, is the quickest in 23rd, is he? Yeah, 23rd, yeah. 26th, and 28th. But obviously, there's two reasons. But one, they're under development, and also, obviously, it's sitting with its base BOP as well, which does tend to uh, handicap new GT3 cars in their first race. Not saying that's what's happening, but it does tend to happen. Um, we have 23 cars covered by less than a second, John, in that oh, yeah. qualifying across both classes. Now, of course, the thing is that virtually all the cars do have one very, very good, at least one professional driver. So the driver there was always a top driver in all the cars. Um, but if you said it's different in setup and different in the way the cars are put together for the three driver, or actually four driver or five driver lights, depending uh, which machine it is. Now, I'm very excited by the next session because this is by far the best LMP2 grid that we've had in IMSA for quite some time, possibly ever. Now, I know the cars aren't exactly as they're used to be, but my goodness me, they are looking strong with this eight, what is it, eight, nine car field that we've got here. Yeah, where, where are they on their various power versions? Is it, is, it the, is it the single reduction or the double reduction? Single reduction here, single I think. Single reduction, yeah. So there's 12 cars going out, and the early takers are Ben Keating, who's with United Autosports USA in the number two car. Uh, Dennis Anderson is already out for MDK by High Class Racing. So two uh, big teams in IMSA coming together there in the number 20. Uh, and... Uh, also going out, CrowdStrike, George Kurtz, expect him to be challenging Ben Keating, John Ferrano for Tower, Stephen Thomas for TDS in the number 11, Aero Motorsport, Dwight Merriman in the 18. And remember, we do have a leash here, here with Lance Wilsey, Dr. Lance Wilsey in the 33, Sean Creech Motorsport with a subtly different but familiar uh, livery, <laughs> if that makes sense. There's still stars and stripes, but it's been given the Andy Blackmore workover. Oh, that'd be good then. Of course, just to, to recap for my own brain there, as I watch now, it's the AM driver who has to qualify, isn't it, in, in P2. So yeah. this is a, we will probably see quite a bigger spread amongst only these 12 cars compared to what we saw in the uh, the first 23 for the GTDs, because they were able to put a pro out there. But expect to see uh, something akin to a medieval joust between Ben Keating and George Kurtz. They have been... And Steve Thomas. Uh, Steve Thomas should be there. 
or thereabouts as well. Dennis Anderson might be close to Gar Robinson. He'll be wanting to be there. So Ben Keating across the line first. We'll start to give you the times as they come in. Watch out for the number two United Autosports car. Ben Keating's been driving um, a 963 as well recently. He drives everything every day. Oh, he's just <laughs> incredible. He's in the form of his life, as is George Kurtz, to be honest, in the crowd strike racing by APR car. Watching and listening to Daytona. Hello there, if you are just joining us. So, just getting going on their first flying laps. I'm not quite sure whether they'll, probably they won't be maximum speed until they get a couple of laps of warmth into the tyres. The first car that's going to set a lap actually is Ben Keating. He's, lead up. he's got, a, he's got both, the bank, both bits of banking and, of course, the Le Mans chicane to get through. Nice bit of track management, positional management by uh, Dennis Anderson's team, MD, MDK by High Class Racing. MDK is Mark Kvame's team. Uh, high class racing we've seen before ran a red and white livery last year and Kevin Payne says I love seeing LMP2 cars on track I think this is going to be some of the best battling uh, they will headline at Canadian Time Motorsport Park they will be the top class there IMSA having to do uh, 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 pushing pieces of paper around like uh, uh, some kind of automotive Tetris <laughs> um, in terms of working out which classes could go to what pit lane and which paddock can fit them all in with the support races. I'm thoroughly looking forward to see the, G the LMP2s at the top of the field. Dan Goldberg puts the first quick time in but then it's Luis Perez compact the man who came out of rallying and Gar Robinson thought he'd be there or thereabouts George Kurtz goes through they're already quicker than the GTD cars that bodes well for what we're about to see in the next 10 minutes or so yeah Steve Thompson right at the top of the tree 143.191 give you an idea that's only a, a 1.2 seconds faster than said Priya, but there's more time to come out of these machines have we got all of them out? I think we have all 12 uh, out on the yeah, circuit. They're all, they're all, they are now coloured um, black, which means they're out, even though someone hasn't set a lap yet on the timing screen. 143, 191, the time to beat at the moment. Now, these cars, generally speaking, if you're watching or listening for the first time, they will generally do the whole session and they will stay out there. It's a testament to Michelin that they tend to get quicker as they burn the racing fuel off. Now, for older people of my, my generation, that's how it always used to be. As the car got lighter, the cars got quicker, and there was enough performance endurance within the tyre that the driver could exploit the car getting lighter. Well, of course, you know, in, in days of yore, you, you had one set of tyres like four meetings, so it wouldn't, they wouldn't see any, any drop-off in three laps. It, mm. it was all about... Uh, a weight and a bit of warmth in those uh, in those bits of rubber. So under 10 minutes to go, and through goes Ben Keating to the top with a 40.166. This is more like it. Luis Perez, Compan, Fabio Richard Mille, AF Corsa team through in second, half a second back, but George Kurtz goes to the top in the number zero for the APR Algar Pro Racing Crowd Strike car. We're just going to be changing every yeah. lap. Interesting, they found what well, that second lap, but having built up and built up, they've most of them found two and a half to three seconds. Uh, and that's just through confidence and grip. Ben Keating for United Autosports, but sort of marrying the United Autosport blue with the winds colours on that car, the bright orange. He's heading down to turn six to go back onto <laughs> the high banks of Daytona International Speedway. Ben loving it, wants to have one more go at Le Mans in LMP2. Spin for the 88 at the Western Hairpin on that car with Luis Perez Compact doing a Ooh, bit of damage. A bit of rally crossing there, and he's damaged the right rear of that car. He'll have to bring that back in. He's going to puncture his right rear Michelin here. I think he must have clipped the wall, actually. Yeah. I just saw him coming back on. The he's, rear aerofoil is deranged. He's broken that. He, and he, he really Missed his breaking point into the West Hairpin. That's exactly what's happened. And he swaps in so quickly as he was offline and off the 
racing surface onto the lighter coloured hard standing. Then That's he lights up the one. He lit up the rear tyres there, but the damage was already done. Uh, he might be lucky to get away with uh, just bodywork damage I, there. I, I feel he'd be better off putting that into a position of safety and getting the car back in half he an hour's want time. To. He doesn't want to because he doesn't want to lose his lap times. So ah, have you stopped using that? If, if you if if you cause a red, no, no, I'm saying pull off safely somewhere. Right, okay. I'm not saying no, absolutely, absolutely don't pause a red. No, pull off safely. Yeah, find there are several places in on the track where you can pull off and uh, just get behind a wall and it's fine. Because as you say, it was most likely to happen with that amount of uh, interface between bits of wing and the tyre. He's going to end up with a puncture and then he's going to start doing serious damage to the car beyond mm. what is probably superficial. Uh, well, expensive, but superficial bodywork damage. He's just at the Le Mans chicane now. In fact, he's, I think he may have stopped, but you can get... There is a cut through there, actually. Mm. Notice that, the, by the way, if, we haven't mentioned this, they've taken out quite a lot of grass on the entry to the Le Mans chicane on driver's left. Hello to Luca Giraldi from Ferrari, who is watching and listening in, and Malcolm Cracknell, the founding editor of DailySportsCar.com. Hello, Crackers. Nice to know that you are watching and listening with six and a half to go. Still to come, the GTP qualifying, which presumably will set pole position another spin, this time for Aero Motorsport, the number 18 pretty blue car of Dwight Merriman. He's sitting in 11th at the moment. Ben Kidney to do another almost two seconds off his time wow. last time round. So it's 138.5. Yeah, this is more like it. So really finding some pace as the as the tyres warm up and they get their eye in. Uh, John Ferrano in the tower motorsports is about a lap behind everyone else. He started a bit later, so he's still working up to that speed. And um, the 88 car, which is called the car which had the damage, is shown uh, stationary coming into the Monge I think that probably means it has found it because there's no yellow flags or a red flag. It sounds like it was almost certainly parked somewhere safely in that area. There's plenty of places there that you can get away from the edge of the circuit, so nicely done if that is the case. Luis Perez Compank will be uh, very disappointed that uh, he made the mistake, but at least trying to um, minimise the effect on everybody else. So what we got left here, five minutes, let's call it. So he's got the performance in the tyres. Daniel Goldberg in the second. United Autosports USA, Richard Dean. And the rest of the team very excited about this American programme this year. PJ High, it improves in the AO racing car. That's Spike, uh, I suppose. <laughs> well, they name their cars and they all ha um, have brilliant liveries. It's Spike a dragon, isn't he? Yeah, Spike's the dragon. And uh, we've got... Rexy, who's on pole position, of course, in uh, GTD Pro for Seb Prio and the rest of the AO racing team. Uh, of course, just for a moment there, that was Ben Keating, and he's missed his braking point. Has he coming into the Le Mans chicane? Oh, got a big swap going on in the middle, but managed to take the release road and has pulled back on to speedway turn number three. That was smart driving. Very smart driving from what people would say is a non-pro driver. Ben is a bronze driver, but that was platinum grade decision making right there. He didn't try to hang on to that car, Nick. We've seen what happens there. That could have been a huge accident. No, you're, going, you're, you're trying to change directions at huge speed going through the Mont chicane. So you inside, you're braking, you're turning, you're trail braking, and then you turn sharp right, and it doesn't always grip as you want it to do. And then you're either going to have a massive accident or a small problem. He managed to make it a small problem. Now, the only downside of that was they actually ruined two laps because he couldn't get up to speed again to cross start finish line at full speed. So he's had to uh, ease back, and there's two laps which won't be happening. Andy Blackmore tuned in. Hello, Andy. Hope you and the family are, wa are well and you had a good Christmas and New Year. He's watching at the moment and taking notes for all the livery changes and new tyre markings for the GTDs as well. He'll be publishing the official IMSA Spotter Guide on Tuesday. He has uh, already drawn up 105 cars. Aston Martin Simon Strang tuned in as well. Hello, Strangy. Hello, mate. Hope you're fitting well. And... 
I think Robinson, Guy Robinson here is taking in, is taking a cool down lap in the yeah. 74. Still three minutes to go. He'll get one more at the end of this. Ben Keating by just half a second now. As the Inter Europol PR1 Matheson slips into second. Nick yeah. Bull. Nick Bull managed to get the fastest first sector time. Uh, of all, of yes. All, yeah, I mean. George Kurtz, 1.4 seconds off at the moment. That's unlike him. His last lap was his quickest. Let's see what we've got, Stephen. Thomas improves to fifth. He's coming to the line now. Here's the 0 4 coming to the line. That is George. Now, was that a quick lap or was that a slow down lap? No. That was another quick lap, 139.9. Where is Ben Keating in the number two? Just completed, Just completed a, lap. a lap, which was a 44.5. So that was a slower lap. So that's a cooling lap. No, that was he, had, he was still warming up. Ah, from yes, the of course. Speedy loss in that, yeah, uh, yes. As you said, he lost two laps effectively there. He's on the infield section at the moment. Two minutes remaining. Carl Robinson in the 74 car at the far end of the infield, the Western Horseshoe. Now down through the short chute towards turn number six and back up onto the banking. He'll get this one and possibly one more, depending on just how quickly he can get around. So Nick Bull just did his fastest lap, just hmm. less than a tenth off the overall fastest. He's got a 138.6 compared to the 38.5 of Ben Keating. Big jump there to third, got was in 39.3. Felipe Massa. Uh, the 74 uh, hat. Yeah, well, he's with the team. And uh, not happy. Now, can Ben Keating do anything with a minute ago? Does he need to do anything with a minute ago? Well, he does because Nick Bull's gone even quicker and cut it down to just a tenth of a second. 138.6 plays 138.5, and I think Ben Keating just made another little mistake there, Nick. He's just run on a little bit wide, and he's locked up the Michelins Oof. at the... That's the international horseshoe at the start of the infield section. So that might be it from him. There's only 40 seconds to go. I'm not sure he'll get back around. Up to third place, George Kurtz, stung by the fact that we were talking about him down <laughs> in sixth or seventh, comes up to third position with a 39-2 for Algarve Pro Racing and CrowdStrike Racing. So, I think it's about four cars that are going to come across the line just in time. It ticks down to 13, 12, 11, 10. I think the 99 car could be the last of one. PJ Hyatt will be the last car over. Should just get the uh, timing scoring. Now. Does. And so he, so now everyone is on their last lap. And the first one to take the chequered flag is going to be the high class racing car. High class racing number 20. Waiting for that car to come round and put in its time. Uh, that was PJ Hyatt locking up, by the way, not Ben Keating. My apologies. At the far end of the, or at the near end rather, of the infield complex. So Ben Keating, the number two car through the Le Mans chicane now. This is where he had his moment a couple of three laps ago. That's nice and smooth, but is it quick? No. So that 49 in the middle sector compared to a 46, which is far. So uh, Ben's decided that he has done what he needs to do, I think. Stephen Thomas takes the chequered flag. Uh, Dennis Anderson pitted, by the way, he didn't finish that. Lap in the MDK by High Class Racing number 20. George Kurtz will be no better than third inside of row two at the moment. Is anybody improving? Gar Robinson had a decent lap last time around. What's he going to do this time around? Where is the 74? Yeah, Just come to the, the line, line now. And he does improve, but he doesn't improve his position. He'll be on the outside of row two. So now it's down to the number 52 coming to the line now for Inter Europol as Ben Keating pits for United Autosports and the wins car. Nick Bull has stayed out and does not improve. Did two of his best sectors yeah, on that very, lap. Very, very close. Only missed it by a couple of tenths in the end. It was the wow. first sector that was a problem. Yeah, dropped a good couple of tenths to Ben in that first sector and that will cost him so it will be ben keating on pole position for united autosports continues this excellent run of form from the last season or so a little bit more than that now really isn't it the time it's been like 
Ben did come through the pits at one stage. I have to say I missed that one. No, no, oh, no, he's in the pit now. Pits now. He's in the pits now, yeah. So Ben, 138.5. He had the two so the fastest overall sector two and the fastest overall sector three. So he just let himself down the first sector to get a, a complete set. Um, I'm sure that first sector was probably owned by uh, Nick Bull, the interior pole machine. No. Uh, George Kurtz was quicker. 23.6, 23.5 for Gar Robinson. We should see the, um, the 24.2 actually. It's down there with um, Dwight Merriman actually. We should this be 23. Yeah. 23. 7. 24. No. Oh, it needs to go in the pits. When they go in the pits, someone will, get, will actually get the purple set to come up. Yeah. Um, interesting because obviously there are different levels of downforce and sector one is a lot more turning stuff than the other two so least year down in 12 of 13 cars is and three seconds away for Lance Wilsey now that's in qualifying and that does not necessarily mean that's where they'll be in the race slightly different performance envelope for that car uh, one race is in the hands of United Autosport. So, that leaves us then with just the GTPs to go. We've got four minutes until they roll out. I'm going for a lie down and a rub down with uh, warm good, halibut oil, I think, idea, before I that think, happens. Yeah. I think the, uh, the barriers all need to take a step back as well, because they could yes. be um, challenged. Do you think so? Yeah. I think this, this, is, this is a massive, um, this qualifying session is, is a huge bragging point. It's also a huge look how we've improved in the last year point mm -hmm. um, for, the, for the works cars. And of course, this is the first time we've had the customer cars at Daytona. They, they came on stream halfway through last season. So JDC and Proton will also want to, I mean, I'm not sure whether they want to be, whether their challenge is to be the fastest or, or just to be as quick or quicker than the uh, factory cars. I mean, it's interesting where they, they set their sights. I'm sure they are much more focused on how they, certainly today, not always in the race, they're focused on winning, but now it's really how they compare to the factory machine. Mm. So just putting this out there, a 133.685 was Ollie Jarvis's qualifying lap record in the 77 Mazda. Okay. Uh, ben Keating, very impressive indeed for United Autosports. I say he wants to have one more crack at Le Mans. Not interested in GT3 machinery. Wants to. Right here, ben. Right here, ben. Wants to be able to um, put himself up against drivers where he has to make the decisions on braking and. Mm -hmm. He's not the only one who, who does that, in fairness. Um, so so is, he, is it still the rule that you have to be platinum or gold to be in the uh, top class at Le Mans, or has that changed? Uh, because that uh, was the rule, of course. It, it, yeah, you couldn't have a bronze driver for certain in the top class. Um, there was talk of, you know, I think it might have been Bradders, actually, asked him at Le Mans what... Um, would you would you consider it? And he said, "I don't like tearing up money uh, that much." <laughs> um, I can't remember who said that to. Might have been. I, might be, I think it was Bradders. Um, I'm just scrolling back to qualifying last year and to see how far we have come in terms of uh, qualifying pace for the uh, the cars that we've seen already got a minute to go before we go green on the track so stand by if you're at the track you might want to uh, step back just a little bit <laughs> That's kick off. I, uh, I think that is a fair point well made. Just waiting for the green.
So with cars out on the circuits. We are in to the 15 minutes of qualifying. New lap record potentially here with the time set by Ollie Jarvis in the Master of 133.685. On a Sunday evening. Don't forget if you are just joining us and you'd like to catch up on what's happening, we will have the archive posted for you uh, later on. It's 10 minutes to go. So whether you're in Ireland or further afield, Johnny Main tuned in tonight, John Cox, Ian Thurston, Koshiro, all waiting to find out who will be on pole position for the 2024 Rolex 24 hours of Daytona. Remember, no number five out there, Neil Janney, with a mistake in the final free practice session, what, some hour or so ago, when he came across the Sebastian Bordet Cadillac. It was moving slowly on an outlap just at the kink on the infield. I swerved to avoid it and hit the wall hard. That car still in the paddock area. W takes an early lead with the 24 car. Philippe Nazar with the first 
semi-competitive time. Timon van der Helm and Louis Delatraz also. 136.947 is the time to beat at the moment. We expect to see that come down. It's nearly perfect conditions, not too much wind. And a uh, very pleasant afternoon. Traffic there for the 40 car of Philippe Albuquerque, currently running six to the main for the racing without Louis Delatraz. That's Louis Delatraz in the 40 car. Oh, you're right, you've got the 10 car, but I've yeah. misread the two cars already. That's, that's the first of many times, I can tell you. <laughs> They're somewhat different in their livery. Yeah, I just saw the accurate shape. <laughs> Red, white, and black on the 40 car. Rather fetching colourway. Beautiful conditions at the moment. A little bit of cloud, uh, but 54 degrees in the air, 79 Fahrenheit on the track. That's 26 on the track and 12 in the air. Do a very structured build up. Just yeah, very. To a 36 7. Don't forget, we saw a 33. One, didn't we, in the previous session? There's the first time that means something. It's time and Van der Helm for the JDC Miller Motorsports Porsche 963, the number 85, the yellow machine. And straight away, we have a new qualifying lap record 133.0. No, it was, uh, was 133.2 you were talking about. It lasted four seconds before uh, Conor de Filippi in the 25 BMW beat that with the 33 flat, effectively. So we are now a full second quicker than we qualified here last year at the Raw. Conor de Filippi finding the pace in the BMW M team RLL. That car improving in the second half of last season and continued improvement into season 2024 with six and a half minutes to go. People to Ronnie to second, 0 0.0, zero, two of a second, two milliseconds away from provisional pole. 133.022 to 0.24. And there's Louis Delatraz coming back at them as well. He's almost two tenths away, which is an age, <laughs> considering what we've got between the first two. Philippe Nasser for Porsche Penske Motorsport up onto the banking. There at the moment, the two PPM cars are eighth and ninth. We will not see the Mustang sampling machine. Yeah, Bordet just threw the car into third, so it's a BMW, Cadillac, Cadillac, Acura, Acura, Porsche, BMW, Porsche, and Porsche. So, uh, well, it's, it's, it's just more than a third of the session to go, so this can change as the tyres get some more than any of the nine cars are, that are running are one to nine. Mm. Which you'd expect. You would expect. So who is next across the line? Louis Delatraz. Another improvement. And now the top three are separated by just uh, three quarters of a tenth. The top five by two tenths. This is extraordinary. And in fact, now the top seven by six tenths. Jesse Cron is a bit out of whack, but he's going to be completing that very soon. He's people to Rani. This is not a bad lap. He only needs to find two tenths, uh, two th milli milliseconds rather, and he has done. Oh, hang on. He's found four tenths of a second. And we have the first 132 lap around Daytona International Speedway. How quick are these GTPs going to be this season? How many lap records are going to go? This is extraordinary pace, Nick, for cars that ran in competition form for the first time this time last year. Yeah, they found a second and a half already with a few minutes to go on qualifying. It's the Cadillacs one and two now. Sebastian Bourdais has done a 32.7, uh, 0.71 of a second, 0 0.071 of a second uh, off his teammate, or his, uh, his chassis mate, shall I say. Mm, two different teams, you're absolutely right. Last year's qualifying, not as good weather conditions. But that aside, we have a new qualifying lap record. Uh, a new qualifying record by one and... Actually, almost a full second. 133.6 was Oli Jarvis's Mazda qualifying lap record, beating the AAR Eagle. PJ Jones's time from 26 or so years before that. So we're down to a 32-6 now. It was a 34-1 last year that took pole. Yeah. As not, says, not, as we not said, quite as not good. quite as good at weather conditions this time last year. Louis Delatraz has pitted the number 40 Acura, the red, white and black car. 
So we'll be no better than fourth. Interesting. Mm. I think this is pretty good running. There is a bit more wind than I thought, actually. 17 miles an hour. Um, Jesse Cron nibbled a tenth off his uh, time in the 24 being a hybrid, but he's still eight tenths or so. Eight point, yeah, eight tenths off the, uh, the fastest. But more concerning, I think, for Porsche at the moment. If ultimate pace of one lap is a concern to them. Well, don't forget, Nick Tandy put the car in the wall this time last year. And so they found out how to fix the car and how sturdy it was. So they won't want to repeat that no. this time. So Durrani uh, at the Western Horseshoe at the moment. BMW number 25 coming on to... Speedway turn four ahead is Philippe Menaza in the 963 Porsche Penske Motorsport. I might just be picking up a little bit of a tour there as they come onto the tri oval now. This looks like a decent lap from the number 25 car. Does Connor de Philippe improve? Philippe Menaza does. He's in third with a 32 8 in the number seven Porsche. So he had a good run. Delatras Pitts de Philippe did not improve there. And still has the number seven of Philippe Mir Nasser as something to aim for. Next across the line will be Jesse Krun, the BMW number 24. He's on the tri oval now. Porsche going quickly is the number seven. Philippe Mir Nasser, third at the moment, two tenths away from Paul, a tenth and a half away from the front row. Krun Pitts, he will be no better than eighth. What about Nick Tandy? Put a decent lap together last time. He's only three quarters of a second away from Paul, but he sits down in seventh position. His teammate comes through the final part of the high banks. Durrani's also pulled it in. There goes Tandy across the line. Doesn't improve. Zero one coming through. Sebastian Bourdet doesn't improve. In fact, it's pitted. Durrani and Bourdais have pitted. So Nasser, the only one at the moment that could perhaps challenge. Time and Van der Helmer comes across the line. Here comes Nasser out of speedway, turn four. Also out there, Connor de Filippi. I don't think they're going to be quick enough here. Will they go one more lap? Looks like they are. Nasser, 34-3. That wasn't a call down, that's, that's mm. to say the tyres are gone. He's got, he has got another run, well, he's a second and a half slower there. Connor de Filippi with a 33, no, he's come in. So just three cars out on the track, both of the Porsche Penske Motorsports. Can Nick Tandy do anything here? Coming to the end of sector two, which is the entrance to the Le Mans chicane on the back straight. Pull position up for grab for next week's Rolex 24 will have it live. Uh, extended coverage starting on Wednesday with Midweek Motorsport on Wednesday afternoon. And you can also download Shea Adams' interview programmes in the Road to Daytona, which we've been playing out, imsaradio.com. Coming to the line. And after this show, Shea will be talking... Uh, again, to drivers, and it's a pit. Is Tandy pitted there? Yeah, Tandy's pitted. Yeah. Oh, I think there's some. Stuff. I think none of these are actually on a fast one anymore. No. So after this session, we will have Shea Adam talking to, among others, Sheena Monk, Zach Robichon, Sandy Mitchell, Madison Snow. That all comes up after this show. And Alex Lynn as well on that. As we wait for Philippe Naza to dive back into the pit lane. It's going to be Pete Bordorani. Finished the season strongly last year and starts well here. Now, the door is open, but he ha has would have had to do that himself. You're not allowed to touch the car under pain of losing all of your times. As he 
trundles down the pit lane. And again, all of the qualifying subject to post-qualifying tech. Uh, earlier on, Ben Keating captured pole position for LMP2 in his first outing for the Wins United Autosport USA number two car. In GTD Pro, Seb Prio captured a uh, first pole for AO Racing in their number 77 Porsche in GTD Pro. In GTD, Parker Thompson for Vassa Sullivan in the number 12 car and starting right behind the two GT Pro front rows. Outstanding stuff then for the GTPs. Quick thoughts from you, Nick Damon. We will see two Cadillacs on the front row. You were spot on. Philippe Nasa, the best of the Porsches from Porsche Penske Motorsport. The next best, Nick Tandy down in seventh position. And between them, BMW, two Acuras. Interesting grid, but only eight tenths between the eight cars that qualified, or yeah. nine cars that qualified. Cadillac looking very strong at the moment, um, but one lap pace doesn't mean an awful lap over the race. Obviously, it's a very different world. I think in many ways, I don't think anyone's too disappointed. The Acuras, perhaps with fifth and sixth, might go in there, but they did pull the cars in quite quickly, so obviously they weren't really focused on qualifying. Um, good performance by Piva Durrani, obviously. I think Felipe Nazi and Porsche, we believe they got someone up within uh, one, just two tenths. And of course, BMW had a bit of a, a problem last year. We said have banished those issues and, and continued that improvement we saw in the second half of uh, the 2023 IMSA season. So, yeah, you, you wouldn't count anyone in or anyone out at the end of this one. Um, yeah, obviously, the only, the only car that's had a bit of an issue is the, uh, the Proton machine, which actually didn't have an issue in this session at all. It was the previous session. Yeah, that was Neil Jarney who didn't take part in this session. So, first blood, first pull. And first bragging rights of 2024. And the front row pole position starting will be in the hands of Pipo Durrani and Whelan Engineering Cadillac for the Rolex 24 hours next Saturday. Our coverage beginning on Wednesday. We have more live coverage uh, and more uh, programming than any other broadcaster. I hope you can join us then. My thanks to Nick Damon.